Hello everyone, today we are going to solve the Klein-Gordon equation for a free field. Now, there are a lot of videos on how to solve the Klein-Gordon equation for a free field online, but I haven't really found any that explicitly goes through it. A lot of them say it's trivial, but, but in my opinion, there's far too many notational queries that can be present for it to be completely trivial. So I will be um, going through this equation step by step in this video. So let's begin. So first of all, what is a free field? Well, a free field is just like a field where there's no particles present. So, so there's no interaction terms that we have to worry about, just the field itself. In the Klein-Gordon equations, uh, remember that it describes spin zero particles. Uh, for spin one half particles, we, 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 we need the Dirac equation, which we, we will be solving in the next video. But for now, just spin zero particles, field with no no interactions. And here's the Lagrangian density. And from this density, we've, we derived the Dirac equation. And I, we did that in the last video. In this video, video we, we will be actually solving this equation. So how do we solve this? Well, it's actually uh, pretty straightforward. So what we do here is, you just, we, is we first distribute this uh, phi term over here. Also note that this is the field, right? Phi. And uh, oh, before we do that, phi is a function of um, time uh, x, y, and z. But what I'm going to do is we are going to re relabel these as x naught, x1, x2, and x3. So then we can just say this is phi of x mu, where x mu is just x naught, x1, x2, x3. It's just to make this thing a bit faster. And this is like this, the standard notation that you'd find in textbooks, by the way. So what we do is we first have to distribute this term in. So partial phi, which is phi of phi mu plus m squared phi mu. Uh, should equal zero, right? Now what we do is we divide both sides by phi mu, okay? Now, I want to stress this. This is a mu, this phi mu is in the derivative. The just derivative is evaluating it, okay? So when we divide both sides by phi mu, this won't cross cancel out because it's already been evaluated by, by the derivative. So we, we divide both sides by phi mu, this stays zero, and we get one over phi mu, partial mu, partial mu, phi mu, plus m squared, these would cross cancel, equals zero, okay? So this is where the um, interesting part happens. What we do now is we take this, so this would have to be equal to minus m squared, right? It has to be equal to minus m squared so that when we add, add the m squared, we get zero. So we could just uh, let this be equal to, mi to um, minus m squared, but that won't give us interesting results. Um, meaning that when we s solve it, our results might be a bit, a bit wishy-washy. I'm not sure how to put that in better words. You can try it yourself, and you'll find out that, find out that your results won't be interesting because you don't have any like uh, quantum numbers to deal with, just mass. So what so what we can we can do is we can uh, define this as being minus k squared minus omega squared, where these are constants, and k squared minus omega squared is defined as m squared. Therefore, we'd have minus m squared plus m squared yielding zero. Now, since k squared minus omega squared equals m squared, um, this means that k squared equals um, m squared plus omega squared. Now, k squared and omega squared, they're just uh, they're just constants, and they have physical significance that we will um, um, comment on in future videos. But for now, these are just constants that, that we are dealing with. Now, we are, we are going to, to, to deal with the case where omega equals zero. So k squared equals m squared. This is actually known as the um, on-shell condition or the mass is on shell. Because um, again, you see in the future video, this K is actually related to energy. And this is kind of equals MC squared in, in disguise, sort of. So for particles where energy is conserved, K squared will be M squared. So that's why we impose 
omega is zero. But we can't study the cases where omega isn't zero, but that's why we are imposing it. Um, a, bit, a bit too long there, but so this is now just minus k squared, okay? Oh, also, I should have been, uh, I, I got, should have been a bit more um, precise in my notation here. Uh, k squared, um, k squared is defined as k mu, k mu. By the way, like k upwards mu, k mu lowercase mu. That's why I mean by k squared, because like you have mu's here. So by k squared, I just mean k uh, upwards mu, k lowercase mu. So what we have here is we have one over phi. So phi of mu, partial mu, partial mu, phi of the mu plus m squared is zero, right? And this is going to be minus k squared or minus k uppercase mu, k lowercase mu, or upstairs index, downstairs index. Um, so now what do we do? Well, now we have that one over phi mu, partial mu, partial mu of phi mu. This equals minus k mu, k mu, okay? So we can multiply both sides by phi mu. And this is the differential equation, equation that we have to solve. So how do we solve this differential equation? Well, well, well now this is a pretty standard, standard equation. Um, I actually made a video, a video titled um, Free Particle Solution. Free Particle Solution to the Schrodinger, Schrodinger Equation. Now this, that video is, it's, it's, it's really very it's very related to this video because uh the Schrodinger equation is related to the um Klein Gordon free scalar field. Um and the solutions are they're pretty they're they're pretty similar. In fact we, we solve this exact same equation. So I, I walk through like this video isn't completely self-contained, but the series that it's in is self-contained. So it's it's it's, really, it's literally the, the exact same steps we, we use to, to solve the Schrodinger equation for a free particle that we need to use here. And using those steps, we'd get that phi of mu is um, we have, we get two solutions. We get e to the i k k mu. Wait a second. I messed up my, my notation again. Sorry. Uh, this shouldn't be phi mu. This should be phi um, x mu, by the way. Let me just change my notation a bit. Yeah. I, mean, I messed up. So phi mu, this shouldn't say phi mu. This should say phi x lowercase mu, by the way. Say phi x lowercase mu. All right, let's just see if he acts like he's me. So we really have phi x lowercase mu. We get two solutions. You get e to the i k mu x mu, and we get e to the minus i k mu x mu. And again, if you guys don't know how we get this solution, watch this video. It's 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 this exact same thing, but we have different labels here. So what what we can do since we have we have two like independent solutions is is we can take a superposition of those solutions. The so phi x mu we have a e to the i k mu x mu plus b e to the minus i k mu x mu. So we're just taking the linear combination of those two terms. And this is the general, like, big quotes on general, a uh, direct solution. That's what I like, like to call them. Like, these are the, like, this is the solution for, for like, one state. Now, to get the true general solution, what we do is we sum over all k mu for each state. So this just rep represents, um, really one state. It's, it's phi k of x mu, right? This is just one state. And then we can take super superpositions of this one state to get an to get another um, valid solution to the Klein Gordon equation. And since k mu is a continuous variable, the summation that, that we'd use for a superposition would just be an integral. If that part seems a bit um 
complex to you guys. Again, this video, uh, pretty much, it's, it's really, like, solving the Klein-Gordian equation in the free particle solution for the Schrodinger equation, it's, like, they're really similar. Um, we, we, we do the exact same thing, because, like, the equations of motion is the same. So, we'd have phi x mu, we take it, the integral of that, and now we have dk to the fourth, and since we have four dimensions, over 2 pi to the fourth. This 2 pi here, it, it's it's here for normalization, okay? Then now we have a, so I guess we have a k mu e to the i times, well, you don't need to, k mu x mu. Here, let me just write it on the page, actually, where we are running out of space. So, yeah, phi of x mu equals the integral of dk to the fourth over 2 pi to the fourth. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, a k mu e to the i k mu x mu plus, now I have b of k mu e to the minus i k mu x mu and yeah this we put this in parentheses so a and b these are functions of k mu now since like when you keep on uh like since we when you take a linear combination of a of of some state that is um c continuous these become functions like i again i go more into this uh, for, in the free particle video, uh, but basically our coefficients are functions since the since what well, the coefficient depends on is continuous, right? So this is the, what we call the general solution to the Klein-Gordon equation for when our particle is mass on shell, and we are pretty much done. This is really the equation that we have now. This actually describes what we call a complex uh, scalar field. In the sense of that, well, we have complex numbers here, right? So sometimes we want to we want to study real scalar fields. And remember that if our field is real, this means that the uh, complex conjugate of the um, field is going to equal the the same field. Uh, I always forget what this is called, like the complex conjugate. I think it's like it's it's the Hermitian conjugate of the scalar field would just equal the scalar field. That's what that's the definition for a real scalar field. So real scalar fields will take the form a phi x mu is the integral dk to the fourth over two pi to the fourth of a of k mu e to the i k mu x mu plus a dagger k mu e to the minus i k mu x mu. And we can see why that is, because if we take um, the compass conjugate of this, it should equal the same thing as this. And let's check. That's the complex conjugate of this entire thing, which 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 is the complex conjugate of this term plus the complex conjugate, conjugate of that term. So this is a dagger k mu e to the minus i k mu x mu. And the complex conjugate um it makes this i a minus i plus well complex conjugate of a complex conjugate that's just going to be the the original thing, right? So you have a k mu e to the complex conjugate of a negative complex number, that's i, k, mu, x, mu. And we can verify how these two things are actually the same expression. They are equal to each other. So, so, th th so that's why this is a form of a scalar field that is real, a very complex scalar field. It's a bit more interesting. We have a, k, mu, and then b, k, mu. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. That's how we solve the Klein-Gordon equation for a free scalar field for a mass on shell particle. Well, mass on shell field, I guess you could say. Um, in my next video, I will be solving the Dirac e equation.
which kind of ties into my space time algebra video. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed enjoy this video and have an amazing day. Bye.